get a flashback of him seeing the the smoke rising over the horizon. You were going to fuck those angels. I had to do Ah, oh, it's fine. It's <laughs> fine. Right. Well, there's totally a moment where Escalim is like, well, but you know, Sodom and Gomorrah did have it coming. And everybody's like, yep, they did have it coming. They sure did. <laughs> yeah. And Abraham, because again, Abraham's not in that story. He's sort of like, yeah, that's uh, not my circus, not my monkey situation. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Why would I introduce it in this book? Also, he kills everybody in a big flood. I feel like we're just bringing up a bunch of my bad shit. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because they haven't even apologized yet. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. Dumbest Bible story ever. They made a movie about oh, it. I'm very it's, uh, it, The dumbest one they've made a movie about, that's for fucking sure. And <laughs> sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Tell me, friend, are you the one they call... <laughs> who has since changed it to Noah. I forgot he changed his name by adding he a letter. Leveled it's up. Almost, yes. It's him my and his only wife note. Both level. Like up. a Pokemon. Yeah. Like a Pokemon. Uh-huh. That is the. I, it might be the least dumb thing. I'm sorry to jump directly into the review, but the least dumb thing about this movie is the most dumb thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Listen, they don't believe in evolution, so you're being blasphemous right now. That's true. Right? Yeah, no, that's With fair. The Pokemon stuff. What about the rocks? Can you do the magic <laughs> rocks in the Bible? They have rocks now, right? Yeah. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched His Only Son. It's the story of that time that God got really bored and set up a hidden camera prank show to fuck with Abraham, mm-hmm. which was fun. Yep, yeah. that's the one. <laughs> and Eli, how bad was this movie? Well... If you love slow, pointless walking, but you wish it all led to your religion's most obvious weak point, <laughs> you will love this movie. It's a, a board of the rings, everybody. Oh, board of nice. the rings. <laughs> yep, that's it. That's it. I have the, I have the guys down in my notes as the mellow ship of the ring. So yeah. <laughs> so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best to be the worst at? Yeah, I'm gonna go with best worst. Everybody hates Isaac in this the whole fucking movie. best. Yep. Every time Isaac talks. Everybody in the movie is just like, shut the fuck up. Get out of the sketch, oh, Isaac. Oh, God. <laughs> somebody <laughs> stab you already. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, I can only imagine that the creator of the universe also hates you, Isaac. I know he's supposed to love everybody, but I just <laughs> want to be clear. He likes you the least, though. Yeah, so I'm going to go with best worst. It's right in the title. Best worst sun counting. Right. As our favorite listener, April Poff, asked when we announced we were doing this one, how the fuck can Isaac be his only son when his rape baby Ishmael is archering his way through the fucking woods at this point in the story? Right. Which they acknowledge in the story. They sure do. They sure do. I'm really hoping that when you buy the DVD, there's like small print underneath the title that's like the one he liked. Stop. Yeah. It's Sarah's only son. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to go with best worst racism defense. Uh, So (laughs) this movie adds a side plot to the Bible. You wouldn't think Christians would love that, but apparently it's fine (laughs) if you're filling for time on fucking pure flicks. Nothing in the Bible that says this didn't happen either. Right, exactly. Exactly. It's the Air Bud version of biblical scholarship. Yes, exactly. Keep in mind, this is a religion that has splintered multiple times about what they mean by I'm sorry to their best friend God. But that's fine. You're apparently allowed to add Mm -hmm, side quests. mm -hmm. And that side quest that they've added is them people are like that, though. Yes, it sure the fuck is. All right, well, they're about to turn three paragraphs of the Bible into a movie, so needless to say, we all got some padding to do, so we're going to start with a quick break, then we'll dive into all the creative license that is His Only Son. Okay, everybody, very excited to welcome you all to the first ever writer's room meeting for His Only Son. In which we get to tell the moving and important story of Abraham and Isaac. Whoa. Praise be. Yeah. So, as you know, this story in the Bible is, uh, well, it's 18 sentences. So, we're going to have to probably punch it up a bit. Uh, Sorry, punch it up? Yeah. Well, you know, add some uh, context. Like, 
biblical context add that? Yeah, sure. So for the most part, we could like tell the story of Isaac being born, for example. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's in the Bible, so I guess that's okay. Yeah, you know, and the banishing of Hagar. Okay, sorry. You you want us to include the story of Sarah banishing the slave that she gave to her husband to impregnate? To rape, yeah. I, I mean, well, I, don't, I don't want to, but, you know, like for time. For time, sure. For time. Uh, okay. Um, so is, is that going to be like enough time? No, probably not. Um, maybe we should, maybe they could like run into some people on the road, right? Sorry, you want to add a subplot to the Bible story that we are representing where they run into people on the road. Well, again, I don't want to do anything, guys, but we need to make a movie. Okay, fine, fine. Uh, so who do they run into on the road? Oh my God, I don't know. They, they run into some bad guys. Okay. Some bad. Some bad okay. Guys. Some bad guys. What? Why? Why would they run into bad guys? Well, because they're bad. Uh, they're they're rapists. Okay. Uh, what's the lesson of that? Yeah. Uh, the lesson is that those guys are bad. Okay. So just to sort of circle back, we're going to tell the story of Isaac, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. including the banished pregnant lady, mm -hmm. and. We're going to add them running into bad guys on the road. Is that enough for the movie? Yes. Okay. Fine. We might need a Jesus chaser. Come on. <sighs> I said might. Hey, podcast listener. I'm No Illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. And I'm Heath Enright. And this week, we wanted to talk about our favorite sponsor of all, our patrons. That's right. The folks who support this show over at patreon.com slash godawful make up the vast majority of this show's financial support, and we cannot thank them enough. And there's never been a better time for you to join their ranks. Not only do patrons get a bonus secular movie every single month, that's 88 episodes you haven't gotten to check out yet, but we've also arranged a bunch of our most frequently requested collections over on Patreon. That's right. You want to hear all the Kara episodes? We got a collection for that. Or how about all the Donald James Parker movies we've done? There's a collection for that. Plus, higher level patrons get mailed rewards, free VIP tickets to our live shows, and so much more. So if you enjoy the pod and you're in a position to give, head over to patreon.com slash godawful. Thanks, and back to the show. And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up on a title card telling us how Abe's faith has given hope to billions. Okay. For 4,000 years, mm -hmm. which is a weird way to count that, right? Like, it's not, the, it's not like the second he was born, he started inspiring people to religion. Right. And also, he meets God, like, in person. It's not faith at that point, is it? Also, have you ever heard somebody mention the faith of Abraham being their inspiration for their religion? <laughs> <laughs> That's like the worst example of faith in the entire New and Old Testament. Yeah. yeah, horrible. And they made a movie about it. Spoiler alert, the only people who ever talk about the faith of Abraham are Christians talking about Jews. And spoiler alert, that is what this movie is. Yeah, so. yeah. No, the, the title card says, the full account of Abraham's life is recorded in the book of Genesis. I was like, full account? <laughs> he's introduced in chapter 12. He's dead by chapter 26. I feel like there's all this shit. <laughs> <laughs> he's got like a cameo in Genesis. Exactly. He's got a little arm. Mm-hmm. So there's a there's a couple of Bible blurbs about Abraham has a very like GOP candidate who Trump once said their name at a rally. And so now that quote is on their website vibe to it. Yes, I wrote in my notes. Abraham, truth enemy, huge fan, says I'm the best. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. So we open it's it's 2000 B.C. We're in a hovel in, in the desert one night when Abraham is awakened by the voice of God. God, by the way, has a great movie trailer voice. Oh, yeah. Really, really yeah, goes full like, boomy God hey, voice. Abraham, buddy, uh, real quick, am I on speaker with Isaac or um, just regular on the phone? <laughs> <laughs> so just you and me on the line. No, 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 just, Isaac's right there. Just you go outside. You go outside. We'll <laughs> talk like in person. And so, I, so Abraham goes outside and he's like, all right, I guess I'll walk in one of the directions and mm -hmm. find God. Ah, God's omnipresent. It's just fits easy. Yeah. So can't yeah, we, do uh can't do a little in ear voice thing. I gotta get out of bed. Yeah, right. Okay. All right, That's fine. fine. I mean, I'm not even involved in this conversation. You're just gonna talk to me, but okay. 
And then we we see God very rare in these movies. We see God from a distance. He's dressed like Enzo from Assassin's Creed, right? Yeah, I was going to say, if I saw this, I'd be like, oh, so you chose to be a Bronze Age guy like me. Cool. No, no, that's so weird. That's what I was hoping you would appear as <laughs> creator of the universe. So then, and, and of course, God says, Abraham, kill your only son, Isaac. And we're like, oh, straight in. Okay. And also burn him as a sacrifice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. When when we jump straight in like this, I was like, oh, okay. So what's the rest of the hour and 44 minute movie right. going to be about? It's yes. walking, by the way. It's walking. Yeah. Mostly walking. You're already halfway through the biblical story at this point. <laughs> so yeah. So then we get our title card, finally, good, which is great because we're almost done with the story. And, and then we open on the next morning. Abe sitting in quiet contemplation. We get him loading up the donkey all morose. <laughs> he's, mm -hmm. he's packing up filicide stuff in a snit. Just yes, being like, yeah. oh, <laughs> exactly. Wow, kill my burn son. And also, I want to point out, because they, they try to do this like Abe as a simple peasant thing at the beginning. Wildly abiblical. Okay? Abe is supposed to be crazy fucking rich. He's a buddy with the kings. The, over and over again in his story, the Bible says he's he's got a lot of livestock, gold, silver, male and female slaves that points out multiple times. Right. So this is supposed to be a, an incredibly rich guy here. Right, but the movie tries to portray it like he's the leader of a well-meaning commune. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, exactly. Like he'll occasionally, he goes at one point that we're about to see and visits some servant, but it's more like he's a buddy boss. You know, like, hey, I just wanted to make sure we were all celebrating Jerry's birthday. Of yes, course, I right. For my slave, yes. <laughs> I'm a god king from the Bronze Age. Also, I have to point this out because it's the first time I was going to realize. So this movie will employ lots of flashbacks where there's young Abraham and Sarah and old Abraham and Sarah, and they weren't going to hire four fucking actors. No way. So we will just, most of the movie, old Abraham and old Sarah will be painted up like they're in a school play. Yes. <laughs> doesn't really work on camera. <laughs> and it doesn't matter when they flash in time. It's just Sarah and Abraham having messy fights for most of the movie. It's walking plus that in flashbacks. Yeah. That's what we're doing. Yeah. Well, and let's keep in mind, too, that these characters are supposed to be 75 in the young part of the movie and over 100 in the old part. Of, so they could have just had old people and then painted them up older. But no, no, absolutely not. <laughs> By the way, these fights are Jew fights, okay? If you're a Jewish or ex-Jewish listener, you have heard this while you were trying to fall asleep as a child. This first, <laughs> let us, oh, it's fine, so don't take the sack with all the good goat skins. I didn't say I wasn't going to take it. <laughs> Keith and Noah's notes are appropriately silent in the Semitism of this fight. I want you to know you're both excellent allies in that none of you just wrote Jew fight over and over and over again in your notes like I did. Okay, I was just like straight up team Sarah the whole time. Everything she's saying is reasonable because her husband keeps claiming for decades that he sees God and he's like, oh, God promised me this. It's going to work out great. Nothing ever works out great. So she's yeah. just mad the whole time, very justifiably. Right. <laughs> and Abraham's trying to soften things already. He's like, hey, so Sarah, like, how are we feeling about Isaac? today like are we positive I really hasn't been fan the chores done lately okay no okay are you just too much Xbox no okay so yeah so but Sarah's like you know I don't want you to go on this trip it makes no fucking sense and he's like I'm going and she's like all right well we'll go and he says I'm gonna take Isaac instead and she's like don't do that right and then of course She's like, all right, we'll take a couple of other guys, too, because it's going to be really hard to sustain a feature length script with just you and the kid for dialogue. So, you know, right. Also, you guys don't talk on the way to the mountain in the Bible. Right. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then we get like the fucking rounding up the team sequence. Right. He's going to yeah. get his fucking team together. We start with Elise and OK, this is just a dude with a Hispanic accent. Right. Like this guy is just. Use it like the filmmakers are like, no, no, it's fine. It's foreign and you're brown. Nobody will notice, right? Okay, so 
I know this is a bit of a call forward because we haven't released the March bonus episode yet, but I will point out that this is now the second actor in a row who has been ADR'd over by unrevealed meme senior pets. I think it's, <laughs> it's really taking over our careers at this point. It's too much of a call forward for me, and I just feel like we need to get out in front of it somehow. You might have time dimension manipulation. I'm, yeah, it's possible. Might. I feel like the bits have taken over and senior pets was where I lost control. <laughs> senior pets has that power, I guess. Okay. Yeah, exactly. I said I could see him. I can't control him. <laughs> so, yeah, so Abraham comes to Eliezer and he's like, hey, I need to take two guys with me. And Eliezer goes, oh, is your wife worrying about you now in your old age? And they have to keep mentioning that because he's supposed to be 115 at this point in the story. So, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, looking rather spry for 115. He's looking pretty good. He looks like um like Don Draper got cast away on an island. But like sure. in a good way, especially for 115 years old, for sure. Oh, sure. Yeah, he looks great yeah. for 115. Yeah. So so Elise just like, oh, why don't I, uh, I, I'll send my son with you. And he's like, yeah, it doesn't have to be your son. He's like, oh, come on. Like anybody's son is going to come to any harm while you who walks with God are with them, right? And he's like, ah, so. hey, he's the thing about that. <laughs> also, just like generally the Bible's not a no collateral damage kind of no, book. I would not. Really? So yeah, so Abe goes back home. He stares sadly at Isaac's bed, and it like there is kind of a well. This will open up some space quite a bit. Like I can have room nice. for my studio gonna now. Do my podcast. Do yoga in here. Yeah, but then Isaac shows up. Now Isaac is the first actor that is just <laughs> making up the accent as he goes. Right. <laughs> Also, he looks extremely silly. What is happening oh, with the outfit and the hat with Isaac? You mean the completely modern Old Navy outfit mm-hmm. and a tiny little sailor hat? Wait, the sailor hat, yes. Exactly. Yeah. Apparently, he was at dress rehearsal for Anything Goes, and then he walks into the tent to talk to Dad here, and he yep. looks so ridiculous the whole time. Yeah, I mean, we may, we may have to defer to Dan McClellan on how old Isaac is supposed to be, but I think they tried to split the difference in this movie by being like, okay, so we'll hire a young adult but we'll dress him like a toddler at a school play. <laughs> yeah. To, no, to be clear, the character is between 10 and 12 years old in the Bible. This this kid, I think they're playing him as like he's 15 or so, right? Sure. Something like that. The actor's like 25. It's Yeah, well, yeah, yeah right. Absurd. There's this great line here, too, where he says to Isaac, Abraham says, the Lord came to me last night, and Isaac says, I shit you not, the Lord God? <laughs> <laughs> I think they're just trying to make us feel better about that guy dying because it really worked. Sure, it worked sure. for me. I was like, oh, fine. Kill him. Stab him right in his fucking heart. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so they go out They're They're getting ready to go. This is also where we meet the other guy they're taking with them, Eskalem. So we've got yeah. Kelvar, Kelzar and as I have them as fucking Ash and Kevlar in my notes. But yeah, those are the two guys that are take, that he's taken with him. Mm-hmm. We also, this is where like, Sarah runs out and she's like, wait, let me kiss my son before you go. Yeah. And she has this great moment with Abraham where she's like, hey, make sure nobody kills our son. And he's like, yep, nobody else will kill our <laughs> son. <laughs> right. right. Our, make sure no harm happens. <laughs> he's like, mm, yoppers. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'll need a verbal yes as if you're you know, at, on an airplane right now, please. Go. Mm. I look, oh, look at what you look at the time. <laughs> Would you look at the goat? Let's get out of here. <laughs> so then we, we have a, our, the, our first flashback. Okay, so we're going to flashback to 40 years ago. We find Abraham has no beard now because, of course, he's a young strapping lad of 75 at this point in the story. Yeah, right? of course. And he's like, his wife finds him. He's laying on the ground. He's like, I saw God. And she's like, did he blow you? Why are you laying on the ground? Yeah. Like Why did it knock you on your ass to see <laughs> God? <laughs> So he's like, yeah, no, God appeared before me. We have to move. And she's like, oh, come the fuck on. How do you even know that he's not, uh, this isn't one of the shitty gods? You don't even know. He said know. my podcast is going to be huge. I'm quitting my job <laughs> and we're moving. It's going to be awesome. This is a great business decision, Sarah. <laughs> yeah. So- we can hitch our house onto the back of a different car and take it other place. It's going to be cool. <laughs> Trust me. She goes, how do you know? He goes, I just know. And I'm like, okay, that's all of religious apologetics in three fucking words. Right. Well, and the best part is she's like, well, you know, maybe he's not the most powerful God or something. And he goes, well, there is no other God. And I just wanted to, I wrote my notes. Okay. Very explicitly not true. According to the Bible. Well, according to this part of the Bible. Yeah, exactly. 
Yeah, and then we we back out of that flashback for some good old walk, and I wrote in my notes, it's like the Lord of the Rings if New Zealand was boring. <laughs> right. <laughs> and they cut to Isaac, and he's so fucking suspicious already. They cut right mm-hmm. to his face, and he's just like staring around, <laughs> terrified, being like, Dad, you keep you keep grabbing your knife on your hip whenever you look at me. It's a big <laughs> knife. <laughs> Everything cool? I think if you dress like that, you develop a someone's going to stab me sixth sense. Right. Yeah, yeah that's fair. He that's fair. will not take this hat off for 15 years of his life, I'm assuming, and everybody hates him. Yeah. Yeah. Spoiler alert. He prepares to be sacrificed in that hat. In yes. that hat. Yeah. <laughs> So, okay, and now we get to the part from the opening sketch with the bad guys. These are, these might be the worst accents we've ever seen on God Awful Movies. And I, you know, I know what a big statement that is. The fucking soldier guy. Yeah, one of them is going for like generic Arabic. Soldier guy who is dressed in samurai armor, he's pretty sure is Roman, (laughs) is going with Leonardo DiCaprio's accent from Django Unchained. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Well, hello there, <laughs> people in ancient Mesopotamia. <laughs> and then there's so a henchman who's dressed like a, an old timey baseball catcher, and he's got like the old timey <laughs> radio voice. Nothing makes sense. <laughs> so, yeah, so he stops him and he asks where they're going, and he's like down the road, and he's like, "All right, don't be a fucking smartass, okay? You don't have to be a fucking smartass." But he's like there to harass him and 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 collect a tithe for going on the road, right? So basically, they're getting slow motion mugged when the guy goes like, hey, who are you? And he's like, oh, Abraham. And he goes, oh, shit, I've heard of this guy. Don't mug him. He's like a main character in the Bible. He knows God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Him and God are close. Is God nice in person? I hear he could be a little distant at meet and greet. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, so wait, aren't you the guy who freed slaves with an army of shepherds? And I'm like, fucking What? What? And he's like, yeah, no, that was me. That was me. They don't talk much about that part in the Bible. This movie, I will say this is the first of many occasions where this movie sets up that Abraham is going to be a kung fu knowing badass, and he is not a kung fu knowing badass. There's even a scene where you're like, hey. He gets one karate moment, and it's pretty cool. Yeah, I was going to say, the the thing is that he might be, and they're just saving that for the sequel, right? He's not really going to bust those moves out until Abraham part two. I would have gone full Rafiki, is what I'm saying. (laughs) I would have gone full Rafiki. (laughs) With the amount of setup we get in this film, I wanted like a a fucking cartwheel kick. You know what I'm saying? No, that's fair. That's fair. (laughs) He's like Yoda. He'll eventually get the Dooku fight where he like goes crazy, right. but then, you know, Kane again. That's what right? I'm thinking. Yes. Because he's like 115. Right. So, yeah. So, but they decide not to to mug him because Abraham's buddies with the king or whatever. Uh, and they leave and they're like, oh, beware of all the wild beasts on the road. And I'm like, oh my God, this movie is more and more side scroller with every fucking frame. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's just got an exclamation point over their head. Ignore them, Isaac. Ignore yeah, them. Yeah, right. You can't talk to everybody. We're already t- leveled up enough. And <laughs> Also, was this a, a slur at this point or were they wading into the racial slurs at this moment that they go for a little bit here? Yes. Uh, seafaring dogs. See, well, yes. Yeah. Seafaring dogs and just the, the word animal when the guy warns him. He's like, oh, you're Abraham. Cool. Beware the wild beasts and the animals as well. Mm-hmm. And that's when he looks at, you know, the, the guy from Syria who is going on this mission with Abraham, I guess. Yeah. So th- this is important because this is where they establish this. So I- I'm forgetting this guy's name. Is it a- Eshem? Esh- Esh- yeah. Eshkalem. Right. Eshkalem. Eshkalem for the rest of the movie will be them people. I will admit I did not pay enough attention to this movie to know what them people is supposed to be. Right. But they will spend the rest of the movie being like, and then pointing over yeah. at Eshkalem. I mean, yes. it makes no sense because this movie's, they're pretty sure that it was like, oh, well, there was the white people. And then there was the rumor, rumor, rumor. but the, these people in history are all approximately the same race, right? Well, right. But they had like, they had their bigotry towards every other tribe or group or religion or whatever. And what this movie is trying to set up is that these people of the old pagan religions are bad, right? Are because, bad. Yeah. Yeah. Th- th- their racism was right at this point. Yes. Yeah. Unlike any other movie you've ever seen where it's like, huh, we don't trust your people. And then the characters learn that that was a mistake to make right. that assumption. Not going to happen in this nope, movie. These guys are just bad guys. Yeah. 
So, okay. So that night they're all sitting around the fire having dinner. And there's this great bit in this movie where every scene starts off with a long bit of silence because they're desperately trying to get so feature much. length. <laughs> because they always want me to write in my notes, I'm thinking of a thing. Is it killing your son? <laughs> Seriously. No. I wrote down sweet burned nuts we got here around our fire. Munch, munch, munch. Never have I ever. You want to play never have I ever? I wrote in my notes in all caps, somebody talk. Why am I watching this? <laughs> but eventually one of the two guys, these are slaves, by the way, and I, I should point this out because it matters in this scene. These two characters in the Bible are two of Abraham's slaves. One of the slaves says, hey, that guy was talking about how you had an army of shepherds and i'm pretty sure that's not in the fucking bible what gives <laughs> so, so so he tells the story and this actually this story is in the bible right where they the eastern kings take over sodom and they, they get his nephew lot and he leads an army to go save them but the, in the movie they're like oh yeah no you saved all the slaves of sodom and I'm like, no, that's not what fucking happened. He Definitely saved his goddamn <laughs> nephew. The, 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 the Abraham that freed slaves. You're thinking of Abraham Lincoln is the yeah. one that you're fucking thinking of. The only time slaves show up in Abraham's story is when he's raping them or chopping bits off of their dicks. Yep. Yeah, that is uh, that is the extent. You, you, you're thinking of the time he went and rescued his nephew from a club he didn't want him to be at. <laughs> right. Just a shitty dad in khaki shorts marching around some nightclub. I'm looking for a lot. <laughs> Y'all know a lot. It's not supposed to be here. Nothing against you people, but I just lot's not supposed to be here, okay? His mom's real worried. I'm Abraham. I added letters. He goes, Wow, it really sucks you saved all those people in Sodom and then God destroyed their city anyway, huh? And they're like, Yep, sure does suck. We even get a flashback of him seeing the the smoke rising over the horizon. They were going to fuck those angels. I had to do Ah, oh, it's fine. Yeah, it's right. fine. Well, there's totally a moment where Eskalim is like, well, but you know, Sodom and Gomorrah did have it coming. And everybody's like, yep, they did have it coming. They sure did. <laughs> yeah. And Abraham, because again, Abraham's not in that story. He's sort of like, yeah, that's a not my circus, not my monkeys yeah. situation. I don't know why. <laughs> Why would I introduce it in this book? Also, he kills everybody in a big flood. I feel like we're just bringing up a bunch of my bad shit. <laughs> so then we watch him sleep for a little while, which is great. We sure do. Which yeah. is a lot of fun. <laughs> we, I'm sorry. We watched three of them. So Abe can't sleep. He's still he's yeah. torn up about the son murder he's going to do. But he's staring at Isaac being like, stupid fucking face. I hate him so much. I hate that <laughs> God damn it. Hat. Where's that hey, stupid bud. fucking hat in his Isaac sleep? Wakes up for a second. Are you wearing the hat to sleep? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, are you watching me sleep? Nope. No. So, <laughs> doodly do. Doodly. Are you saying doodly do? Why are you? <laughs> well, yeah. And then we doodly do, right? We flash back to God giving Abraham land that people already lived on, right? This is the part where he's like, count the stars if you are able, so shall your descendants be. And I'm like, very far away and on fire? Because uh, that's not good, but that's not what he, what he meant. There's this fucking amazing moment. And again, I'm only half paying attention to the movie because I'm so bored at this point. But I just see a, a hand reaching down into the sand. I thought it was Abraham preparing to pocket sand God in the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> But no, it's God with this. Hey, we can't thing. help but make better movies. Ow, what the fuck are you doing? You still have to kill your son. I'm still, I'm God. Still. I thought that might and, be, and it hurts my eyes. I thought that might be your weakness. <laughs> Great. Kryptonite? So, and then we we have like a flash, flash forward to sacrificing Isaac. It's just a dream. But, you know, like it's, it's like the movie's going, but hey, shit's coming. Shit's coming. Right. We assure you something will happen. Yeah, but it won't, though. But yeah. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, this movie needs a minute to flesh out how it's going to fill the runtime. So we're going to give it a quick break. But we'll be back in a minute with even more of His Only Son. Abraham. Abraham. Yes, Lord. What do you ask of me? Abraham, I command you to kill your son, Isaac. Oh. Got it. Hey, everyone, God's evil. You don't have to follow him anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, what, what, yeah. what are you doing? Yeah. I'm trying to kick you because you're evil. I was wondering who the. Oh, I wonder who the real God is. Paul seemed nice when I was a kid. I should try that. No, yeah. no, no yeah. I'm the real God. Oh, you are. You're just evil. Oh, that's a bummer. 
No, yeah. I'm, I'm not evil. It was a test, okay? A test. Oh, you wanted to make sure that my worship wasn't unreasonable. Hey, everybody, I was wrong. He's just making sure I wasn't worshiping for the right reasons. He was just doing no, a test. No, it's not that test. I, I wanted to make sure that you were loyal. Oh, by asking me to kill my son? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, check that. Check that, everybody. Still evil. Yeah. 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 Oh, who the fuck is this guy? Oh, hey, yeah, I was just passing by. I heard you ask a guy to kill his son, and I have a moral compass, so uh, uh, now I'm going to kick you some more. Yeah! Yeah! Jesus yeah! Christ! Yeah. yeah, we'll kick him, too. Kick him so hard. Yeah! Part of the problem. <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action in another Abram and Sarai flash because we're seeing them before they level up to Abraham and Sarah. So this is another flashback of Abram and Sarai. This time they've, they've gotten to their promised land and <laughs> Sarai's looking out over it going like, well, this sucks. Your God's the <laughs> fucking worst. This is the promised land, bro? <laughs> Come on. Did God give us the only piece of this continent that doesn't have oil surrounded by our enemies? Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah it's unfortunately. Kind of. Yeah. And she's like, you know what we should do is we should go to uh, Egypt since there's such a famine. And I'm like, oh my God, that's the part of the Bible where he tricks the Pharaoh into fucking his wife by telling the Pharaoh that she's his sister. Are they going to show that part? No, they're not going to. No, we do they don't. not get that funny. part. Yeah, and by the way, she she also again everything they will say is a Jew fight because as he's he's like, all right, well, I'm gonna head out, and she's like, oh, by the way, I got my period again. Just uh, did you hear God correctly when he said you were going to have a bunch of kids? I just want to make sure. <laughs> yeah, definitely, That's maybe you said. could write it down next time he talks uh -huh. to you. Yeah. Just write it down. Just write it down. <laughs> Maybe I could come to one of your God meetings. No, I can no, meet your friends. No, he said. Why can't I meet what? your friends? No, you should. You're ashamed of you me. Have to go, you have to go into your tent, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did actually write that in my notes. I was like, first of all, she should be in her shame hut if she has her period right now. Right? Yeah, right. <laughs> so yeah, so we back out of that flashback, back to the mellowship of the rings. They're just sitting around. But again, we get a whole bunch of fucking silence. And then the two slave guys shit talk each other's moms for a bit. It's either that or one of them forgets that the other one's mom is dead for small yeah, talk. That's what, <laughs> yeah, that's what Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. It's the second. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so they have this incredibly awkward interaction, right? Where good slave guy, I call him on Abraham's dick guy in my head the entire time. Sure, he's sure. just that's on Kevlar. Abraham's dick. Yeah. Yes, Kevlar. Kevlar is like, hey, how's your mom doing? And he's like, fine, how's yours? And he's like, dead. And he's like, right. Yeah. And this is how they transition out of that conversation. Kevlar goes... So you know whose mom is not dead? Isaac's mom. She loves you so much. She's so glad no one yes. stabs you. Right. Yeah, exactly. So then, so they walk on, they they come across this abandoned wheelbarrow. Ash, because he's a bad guy, he's not like, you know, Jewish yet. He tries to steal the stuff and everybody's like, hey, don't, don't do that, man. We're, we're good people here. So they wander on a little bit more and they find this nearly dead guy whose wheelbarrow it is. And he's like, they took my daughter and then he dies. Right. right. I wanted Ash to be like, so are you done with the basket of chestnuts that we saw back there? It feels like you're not going <laughs> to. Can I have Because I got yelled at. Just so you know, I got yelled at. Uh, so just to be clear, you weren't going to use them. And it was actually kind of a waste not to take them. I just wanted to clarify. Right. But so then they're like, oh, should we go save this guy's daughter? And we all wrote in our notes, oh, my fucking God, did this movie just to get a side quest? But they're not gonna. No, they're not even going <laughs> to bury him. Abraham goes, they, they go, fucking one of them is like, we should bury him. And Abraham's like, no, we will leave him as a warning about how much people suck. And Ash is like, okay, I feel like you just didn't want to dig. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like a, I don't want to dig thing. <laughs> well, also he goes like, you know, oh, I guess who whoever could be the person who stole the, the daughter and Abe's like, well, it's obviously the fucking the horseman guy with the Nebraska accent from earlier. Duh. He's the, yeah. They're the only other characters in this movie, unless it was Isaac's mom. Yeah, right? We're in a side scroller. Who else could it possibly have been? Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he looks down and he sees tracks and he's like, see the horse tracks. And I'm like, it's a road. You're on, we know they're on that road. No, no, it's their horse. I can tell. Yeah. So, <laughs> so they walk some more. They eventually, they, they find their way to Hebron, which might as well be drawn into the background with Microsoft Paint. 
This is so funny. They literally have a moment where they're like, oh, are we going to have a scene in ancient Hebron, the city of your birth, where we explore who you were versus Shut who you are? No, up, Isaac. Nobody likes you. We don't. <laughs> We don't have the budget for that. Are you fucking kidding me? We don't have a Hebron budget. No. <laughs> we can wander around Vegas some more. We would. You can see the walls in the background. Yeah. Take off that fucking head. <laughs> <laughs> fucking so. stab you. <laughs> and then we flash back to Sarah. She's real sad because she can't have kids. And that's the only purpose that women have is having kids. So she's praying for a child. Abraham comes across her, but she's praying wrong. She's praying to the wrong gods, damn it. <laughs> okay, yeah. can I explain what I thought? And I know I'm wrong. I know I'm wrong now, but can I say what I thought? So she set up a little praying to the wrong god circle. I thought it was a grave for one of the fetuses she had lost. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Interesting. Because it was a teeny tiny little grave. No. Nope. No, they only do that in Texas. Abe, this is going to make sense in Alabama and Texas. What? I don't worry about <laughs> Trust it. me, this is great. <laughs> but yeah, it's so dumb the way he gets mad too. He's like, hey, hey, Sarai, you got to stop using rocks to pray with your pagan bullshit. That's dumb. We talk directly to the guy who fucked me on the land deal. That's how we pray. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. And well, and this is where she points out. She's like, hey, man, you've been like 25 fucking years have been following you around. You've been saying, oh, God said this. God said that. None of the shit happened yet. <laughs> right. And he's like, you got to have faith. And she's like, you've met the guy in person. Right. Like you're this. You're asking me to do a thing you ain't doing. Yeah. yeah. She's she's doing what I do with every landlord in my life. Like, oh, you you will fix it. Great. Can I get <laughs> I'm so stupid. Can I get an estimate on the baby? Because it's been <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. It's been 10 years. There's a big hole <laughs> in my kitchen. <laughs> You keep saying the Lord will provide a baby. But I mean, maybe he'd provide for us if your dick would work. And he's like, yeah. okay, we're done. We're done. Fuck your rocks. But then we cut to like that night in the flashback. We're fucking swooshing a doodly do here. So that night in the flashback, Abe is like, all right, God, she was, she was being kind of nasty about it. But like she was she's fucking right. You, you know, you're, you're making me look like an asshole over here. Right. So then. Suddenly, God appears in a flash of lights, and I had feather sperm in my notes. I don't know what this was supposed yeah, to be. It is feather sperm. It felt like God was showing up late to a meeting, and he was just like, oh, I got to give him a message. I'll throw him in the ocean? Yes, yeah, he throws yeah, he him in the ocean. Throws water. He throws Abraham in yeah. some drowning scenario to give him a quick message during that. Okay, so here's the thing. Best case scenario, because then he sees him walking across the water because it's Jesus, get it? But like, best case scenario, God was like, sorry, I had to throw you in the ocean. I, I wanted you to see me do my cool walking on water trick. Right, oh, yeah, well, right. I, I had to do a Jesus call forward or people would think this was a Jewish movie. And <laughs> Right, <laughs> couldn't you do that in Jewish a lake? Movie. I was getting hit by like ocean crashing waves. You did it right there? <laughs> Not Yeah, Worst case scenario, God dropped him in an ocean out of pettiness to be like, sorry, no, you were uh, questioning me. Uh, I just wanted to. And then I forgot that I can walk on water and you can't. So you've gone all over. Uh, sorry, you had to, you had notes on my process. You had like a note yeah, for me. Yeah, right, right. Maybe. Like, but, but you want me to explain one of my jokes, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> and he's still just vomiting salt water. <laughs> yeah. But God's like, yeah, no. So I'm pretty bummed because a servant in my house is my heir. And I'm like, oh, in the Bible, it says the son of your slave is your heir, suggesting that you raped that slave. But I guess you just, it's different translations mean different things. So. You want to go back in the ocean? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just one of those bosses who loves to give back, not according to the Bible, but just here in this movie. I'm yeah, just, I'm one right. of those guys. Every Friday is a pizza party. Okay, relax. <laughs> But yeah, but God assures him that the servant shall not be his heir, right? So now we're we're temporarily done with that flashback. We're going to go back to the mellow ship. Now they've walked past Hebron. Hebron's in the back looking like it was created by the level builder for Load Runner. Sorry, I'm talking to my fellow olds with that joke. Someone loved that. <laughs> Someone loved that so hard. They blew the dust off their collection and gently stroked it in appreciation of that joke. Right, right. So, but they walked by fucking... Blew their Load Runner. <laughs> nice. So, but then they walk by fucking Grima Wormtongue the Pimp, right? This guy who's out here, he's like, uh, extra, extra, get your prostitutes right over here. Got a lot of prostitutes. I don't feel like you have to work that hard, but okay. All right. Yeah, it is. Um, it's, it's, it's not a good sales pitch. There's a lot of touching, 
lot of touching of the customers. Like mm-hmm. faces mm-hmm. and stuff. Feels yeah. like he heard get the product in their hands and didn't really understand what that <laughs> instruction means. Also, and I have to talk about this and I need you, I need you to stand behind me. We need to be unified. Brotherhood, this is so important to me. He pitches all the men, they walk by, and for a second, he pauses and looks at the donkey he it's like he's going to pitch the donkey on a he prostitute. Does. Okay. Does. <laughs> that is not... I got a lady donkey in here, by the way. I interpreted that, but I get where you're coming from. <laughs> for sure. I thought he was being like, oh, nobody... Okay, you're all fucking that donkey. I know you're fucking that Right, donkey. yeah, it was one right, or the yeah, other. Sure. It was one or the other. Oh, you I didn't read see you guys had a donkey. Okay, no, never well, mind, you know. Yeah. So, so... <laughs> So then we, we go back to our flashback. That was the entire thing. We just cut back and he's like, ah, they probably got offered some prostitutes on the road, but they didn't take them because they're Bible characters. Huh? They didn't take them because they're great. And they're great. They wouldn't. Tomorrow. A lot of this movie feels like it was written in front of a guy's wife, right? <laughs> a lot of it. A lot of this movie feels like, and Abraham, he didn't want to. Yeah, it didn't even. He, didn't, he, he was hated tempted. It. He Yeah, he was like, Ugh, that's what he thought about <laughs> so- other women. No, he didn't. He couldn't see them. <laughs> so then we flashback to to medium old Abraham. I had him out for a jog, but no, but apparently he's been off chatting with God. This is like him coming back from the ocean dip, right? And he's like, um, hey, I've got great news. God said I'm going to have a bunch of kids. And Sarai's like, what about me? And he's like, why does this always have to be about you? I don't understand why it's always got to be a you thing again like i'm sorry to keep harping on this this is every jewish couple like i've been at this brunch (laughs) and made wide eyes at anna and been like oh you know what max's babysitter needs to leave early today so we are going to (laughs) get going and you guys can work out whether or not he hates your mom what a fun (laughs) thing to talk about here in front of me so okay so now we're we're about to breach a subject that's awkward even for the movie about that time God told that dude to stab his son, right? Because this is the part of the Bible where Sarai offers up her slave for Abraham to rape so that he can have a kid. Right. And again, we're writing this in front of our wife, so it was like, no, no! Yeah, right, I would hate to have to fuck the maid. That would be terrible. no, I haven't already done that according to the Bible. No! Right, yeah, right. (laughs) Right, and to be clear, this movie plays this off like this tremendous, horrible, like post-1950s monogamy Christianity culture. Mm -hmm. It's Multiple wives is completely and totally commonplace as is having slaves as like extra breeding stock right yes so the idea that sarah plays this like we have no choice yes it's it's like if my wife came in and she was like i want you to have more than one uh, pen in the house it's important to me (laughs) that you have something to write with (laughs) and and you know abraham's like oh i couldn't do it and she has to go like no actually raping slaves is totally cool by the moral standards of the day he's like oh it is that's right we both live in it this time so we both know this Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's so don't worry everybody this will have the funniest possible resolution later in the flashback (laughs) So, yeah, so she weepily gives him permission to fuck other women. Guys, if she's crying when she says it, it's not really permission. It's not. Hey, this movie, really good guide to how not to open your marriage. Yeah, right. What's up, everybody? Right. She's like, let me be a good wife and give you a person to rape. And he's like, I don't think that's a good anything, actually. Yeah. So, okay, so we back out of the flashback. We're back with the fellowship. They're sitting around the fire. And now it's time for a little apologetics. Right. This is the part where Ash is like, hey, your your religion doesn't make any fucking sense. Right. <laughs> and Abraham's like, exactly. Right. And he's like, <laughs> what nope. the fuck are you talking about? That's nothing. And the point is like, OK, well, if you don't believe in God's plan, you're blind, which was like a pre-Muslim slur thing and a dumb thing about religion and faith at the right. same time. Well, what's amazing is they're trying to do the Ray Comfort apologetic, right? You're a bad person now, you think, because you're a murderer and a liar and a thief. Except in canon, none of the weird thought crime shit that Jesus said exists yet. Right. So Abraham's just sitting there being like, no, no, trust me, people are shitty. It's going to really, it's everyone sucks and God rules. And um, 
Gosh, I hope he figures out some kind of contract to figure that out for us because yeah. we just, we, oh boy, do we suck. <laughs> Eventually he gets to like, yeah, we're all infinitely bad. Now, how do you fix that? And I was like, stab your son? Because yes. I told you to, because that's the plot. Is the correct answer. Well, so, we, and I also have to point out what's going on here theologically, right? Because, of course, the story of Abraham is common to all the Abrahamic faiths, right? The the, the Jew, Jewish faith has this story. The Muslim faith has this story. The Christian faith has this story. So this is Abraham sitting around like presaging Christianity because they're like, well, how can a sacrifice make things okay? And he's like, yeah, well, it, what, what it would take is the purest of all sacrifices if someone's only son was sacrificed. So th th like that's mostly what this whole sequence is about, right? This is all about how, wow, this religion is just incomplete without Jesus as a savior, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, this, it feels like we're only halfway through the Testaments. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I feel like it's really a good they even have Thanks. a little quick shot of bread to give us the Jesus solution. Yes, yes. So mm -hmm. Ash is like, why would your God require murdering in the plan, though? And Abraham's like, hmm, I have bread. bread Are you looking bread, at my bread? bread, 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 bread. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> watch me break this bread. Okay. Yeah. I would like to point out that both Heath and Noah picked up on that. I, born and raised Jewish, did not. And I was like, why the fuck is there bread now? <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. So he's like, yeah, you know, so why if God is immortal and omnipotent, why would he need any kind of sacrifice? And Abraham starts giving this weird bullshit apologetic that eventually gets so convoluted that he himself within the movie that the fucking screenwriter wrote for him has to resort to mysterious ways. I think he had to yeah. take a time out and eat some bread to stall in real life. Yeah. And so we got that <laughs> shot. And they're like, oh, no, that's perfect for a dumb thing. Yeah. And then he lands on. Okay, no, no, I got the answer. Uh, God would require murdering because mm -hmm. we have to be reminded mm -hmm. that as humans, we die. Die. Sometimes. All the time. Die. Stupid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, well, there goes my atheism. I forgot I was mortal this whole time. And that's what happened <laughs> in atheist. Oh, man. Okay. I think everyone needed reminders of that in the Bronze Age. And to be fair, Ash is like, wait, sorry, you believe that? And he's like, no, but William Lane Craig said it would like trick people who were kind of <laughs> right, yeah. feeling cognitive. <laughs> C.S. Lewis said that it's not an impulse or an instinct and that I'm not allowed to ask any follow-up. <laughs> he got an invisible letter from a guy who didn't have any follow-ups. this. <laughs> and again, it's just so good because, look, this is a bad apologetic when you have Christianity to deliver the whammo bammo, but Jesus died and cleansed your sins, right? right. Post hoc, it's better, but still bad, but they don't have it in the movie. So he's like, yep. So he just, God is just, he's so mad. Gosh, he's mad. <laughs> he really just oh, fucking hates us. Have you seen my really, son's hat? You get it. Oh, you get it. You get it, right? <laughs> Smell us now. Senor Pets is going to pay off eventually. Just trust, <laughs> hey, it's trust me. You wait. Uh, Cecil's getting around to it they record a lot at a time <laughs> so, so okay so then we cut to we're back in the flashback Sarai is getting Hagar rape ready it's weird that Sarai is in the room at the beginning to like fire the starting gun this on this rape isn't a it weird way to start it she's like yeah thanks for doing the laundry there Hagar uh, just one last thing for today <laughs> On your to-do list. Oh, no. You might want to sit down. I know this isn't on the closing checklist, but... <laughs> I need you to do roll-ups and... And? Abraham. So she's like, okay, uh, you guys fuck and go. And then she walks out. We watch her walk out of the tent and just cry. And I'm like, is this movie trying to get us to empathize with not the rape victim in this situation? Because okay. I'm very much yeah, so. This is, it seems like Sarah could have been involved, right? Like... In the, the moment still, it's like a Falwell <laughs> scenario, right? Sure. Yeah. Hagar feels, I feel like the performance note they gave Hagar was like, but you're excited, yeah, right? But you're like, into it. But you're into you're, it. It's not, she's not giving him so much as she's giving you the opportunity. We'll be outside be. with how sad she's right. feeling about yeah. your. You can fuck Abraham for exposure. <laughs> huh? <laughs> right? Huh? What if I told you we could take your current slave audience and to using clips of it on YouTube generate you hundreds of thousands tiny, of <laughs> tiny little ads in newspapers all Build over <laughs> yes <laughs> 
So then, okay. okay. Now I'm picturing an auto ad popping up during the sex with Hagar. <laughs> you know what's the only thing worse than sex with Abraham right now? <laughs> auto ads. So then we, we, he wakes up from the flashback and we watch him like, you know, like we zoom in on his eyes. And I wrote in my notes at this point, I'm like, imagine how good an actor you would have to be to fully embody Abraham's conflict here. Now imagine nine rows belong that on actorhood. And that's what we're looking at, right? Now imagine a man seeing The Rock do that thing where he switches his eyebrows back and forth yes. and trying it for the first time. <laughs> that's what this actor does. <laughs> So yeah, so but but this is the way like Abe has to walk out and has his like big prayer to God moment, right? He bows down and he clings to his crook and he's like, God, I I totally get wanting to kill my son. I've like the hat. I get it. I get it, but pretty <laughs> please though, we could I'm sure he'll grow out of it. Yeah, because what the movie is doing here is it's rewriting the Hagar sex as like his big sin. Yes. Which is not in the Bible. Nope. And I don't understand why any Christian would be okay with it. This would be like if there was a scene in a Christ movie where Christ was like, and I'm so sorry for fucking up that olive tree. It just really got, it got away with me. I was hanging out with my bros and I mean, the tree embarrassed me. It embarrassed me. I didn't need to turn over those tables. I could have just, I could have just sent him a strong. I could have just not bought something. I could have just not bought something. <laughs> so. And my God, so like the funny thing about this movie is that the lighting is good. The costuming is terrible. The 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 direction is terrible. The cinematography is good. So it's like random what is and isn't working within this film, which is I'm reminded of again at this point where Abraham pounds his chest in anger during his prayer and hits his goddamn lapel mic. <laughs> <laughs> Like me doing a physical bit that Noah's going to have to cut. Yeah, right, right. Uh-huh. So, but he has this big prayer. He turns around and he goes to walk away. And then like we back out and we see the side of God's Enzo robe, you know, so we know that God was listening the whole time. Right. So, so to be clear, God is full on Michael Carbonaroing this oh, sacrifice. Sure. Yes. He might as well turn to the camera and be like, looks like what would you do? Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, the movie just had a no shit. The plot is still the plot scene. So I think we need a break. But first, let me give actually the hard sell. Will Abraham put one foot in front of the other? Will Isaac put one foot in front of the other? Will Kelzar and Eskalem put one foot in front of the other? Find out the answers to these questions and almost nothing else when we return for the ambulatory conclusion of His Only Son. Well, that's the last of it, Sarah. We're off. Husband, take good care of our son, please. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, let nothing happen to him on the journey. Yep, got it. Promise me that. Got it. Promise me. Sorry, what? Promise me you won't let anything harm our son. Oh, yep. Yeah, totally. Totes. Totes. What, what are you doing? I said promise me. So no, I, I said, I, I promise I won't let anyone else hurt our son. Sorry. You said anyone else? Mm, did I? Hmm? We should probably get going. The goats are going to get. We, I promise no harm will come to our son. Thank you. From outside forces. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with the slaves pack of the donkey for another long day of walking, this is the one where Kevlar's like, hey man, don't make fun of the boss's religion anymore, okay? You asked way too many questions last night, okay? Yeah. And they have this bizarre fucking scene where like Ash tells him like, hey man, you're lucky to be Abraham's slave. Do you know how good a slave owner you got? Right. Sorry, what you want to just elaborate? You want you want me to be an, a nicer slave? Is that what you're saying? Yep. You want to just keep going with your thought? We're watching. Is that what we're doing for this whole scene? Ungrateful. <laughs> well, and Kev Ash points out that Kevlar is a bit of a nepo baby for a slave because I guess he's the son of the slave that would have inherited all the money if neither Ishmael nor Isaac had been born. Yeah, he's basically the coolest boss ever. So, you know, you got a really great deal out of this, right? And then fucking Ash points out, he's like, hey, like, We've been sitting here talking about like people being passed over and like, what about fucking Ishmael? And he's like, come on, that's a low blow. <laughs> right, right. 
Well, and then he turned like as a as a gaja ash turns to Kevlar and he goes, "Hey, won't your progeny be slaves?" And I'm like, "That's actually a a uniquely American cruelty. That's not how it worked." Yeah, no, that wouldn't else, wouldn't ever. be true for the Bronze Age. Luckily, yeah. And then and then Kevlar threatens to tattle on him. He's like, "I will tattle on you." Do yeah, you hear me? I will right, tattle on right, you. Yeah. And then he walks off, and Ash is like, "Ape's still a dick, though." I, I, I'm it's not so saying stupid. to anybody, but you, you know, I, I, I dumbass is what? <laughs> what? So okay. So meanwhile, Abe is flashing back to Hagar being pregnant, but but she's a slave, so they still made her work, right? She's still got to carry some water and shit. She's right. like eight years pregnant, and she's right. chopping wood yes. and like, yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> right. And to be clear, to be clear, what this movie is trying to show us in this moment is she's pregnant and being real showy about it to Sarah. Real haughty, yeah. Uh huh. Look how pregnant I am with your husband's baby. Yeah, right. Yeah. Which, to be clear. Is the story in the Bible. It is. Not one I would choose to retell after the medium of film had been invented. But yeah, this is what they're trying to represent. Well, right. So now, to be clear, what happens in the Bible at this point is that Sarah beats the shit out of Hagar so badly that Hagar runs away and then God has to go dread Scott her back into the rest of the fucking story. Mm-hmm. They don't show that. They don't They don't show him her beating a pregnant slave in this movie that uh, didn't make the cut right but instead sarah's picking again another jew fight with abraham about doing the thing that was her idea and look i know this movie was going for great drama but i was <laughs> absolutely <laughs> losing my mind with how funny it is because <laughs> abraham's like you literally told me to do i said no and she's like oh did you and he's like yes it's a movie <laughs> He's like, I didn't want to do it. She's like, you didn't protest very hard, though, did you? He's like, well, no, I didn't. I guess I didn't protest very hard. She says, like, you know, I was, I, I was just trying to be a good wife by giving you a human to rape. And he's like, well, no, yeah, that is what a good wife would do. I guess you got me there, right? And he's like, okay, so, so are you a good wife? And she's like, no, I was just <laughs> pretending. <laughs> and then Abe, to show what a good guy is, he is. He's like, hey, you know what? Do with her what you will. Whatever you wanted, you want to beat her, you want to kick her out of the house, you can do that, which again is what she does in the Bible. Yeah. And this ends with him being like, no doing tests from now on, though. I hate tests. Yeah. E except, of course, for the main plot. The plot of, of the movie. fucking yeah. movie. Yeah. I was wondering if like they accidentally did like a, if you think about it, God and Sarah are the same in that they have insane standards about rules that they made up. And now they're mad because someone violated their own rules about them to them. Yeah. Oh, right. Right. No, it's a good parallel. <laughs> yeah. Nailed it. So, okay. So then we back out of the flashback to the mellow ship again. With Isaac basically saying, hey, guys, this is Act 3, right? This is the day we get to the thing, right? We have, we've done very bad You're pacing. So I just oh, my God, we're not there yet. We're almost there yet. <laughs> Jesus. Hey, guys, I was just playing my favorite game, the, uh, the Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, and now that I'm all done. <laughs> <laughs> you could see Abraham almost being like, okay, yeah, he is the worst, but th that's probably, that's actually helpful to me because right, I the it's shit out of him in like a day. Well, yeah, because Isaac's like, oh, wow, you know, this country that God gave you is so awesome. What did you, hey, Dad, what did you have to give him in return? And Abe's like, you know what? I haven't seen while I was uh, Big League Chew. Does Abe C still make that? I bet they don't. These are good burnt nuts, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, and then this is where Isaac has this, like, hey, Dad, you know, you've been acting real weird the last three days. Something up? And Abe's like, nothing is up at all. I'm not going to stab anyone, let alone you. What? You said stab. They <laughs> they walk a little bit more. Give me that fucking hat, though. And then they finally make it to Ephratha, which is apparently where they've been going this whole time. Yep, here we are. And, and my notes just say F. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, by by the way, audience, um, F is spelled exactly how you think it is. Yeah, yeah. and it, they're just in like a random spot. There's no like big sign or anything. <laughs> Abraham's just like, yeah, here it is for the magic. I dropped a pin and God was like, there you go. <laughs> so we're good. Right. There it is. Impressive. Now we sit in a cave and eat burnt nuts for a while. Well, right. We're going to we're going to sit around and have a little dialogue first. So this is where Kevlar notices that there's some writing 
on Abraham's walking stick. And he's like, oh, what does it say? And he's like, oh, so, you know, it's in a language that's been lost to time. Nobody knows what it says. He's like, oh, so it doesn't serve any function in the movie. Why would we be talking about it then? Could just be scratches. Yeah. <laughs> Are we at an hour and 44 minutes yet? <laughs> Name all the words you know. Well, if we put all of the Patreon backers on here. <laughs> Yeah. And so he goes, you know, it's been down, it's been passed down for generations and generations. And Ash is like, oh, I guess it's even more shit for your Nepo baby to inherit. And everybody's like, guys, it's a stick. It's a, it's a fucking, like, there's a way Ash, more. Ash, you got it. This is everything with you. Let's get every time you've got to bring this up. <laughs> Let it go, man. Kevlar's like, wow, someday you get to hand this stick down to your son. And Abe's like, well, let's not get carried away with uh, with uh, predictions. Why? Well, why someone's we... going to get the stick for sure. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Someone will uh, have the stick. But, then, but Ash has had enough, right? He wants to ask more theological questions. Mostly, why did you call my people seafaring Earlier, that seemed like a slur, right? Yeah. And he's like, look, your people are rapey. That's why I don't love them. <laughs> he is. He's like, you guys, they have a wrong religion and they're all rapey. <laughs> right. And to be clear, they are hitting all the beats in a movie where the character learns that that is a bad opinion to have, except they will never hit the final beat nope. where that is a bad opinion to have. Nope. They sure the fuck won't. They will prove again, like late in, later in this scene. Yeah. We'll get there. But so he's like, yeah, you know, actually one time your people stole my wife and put her in the king's harem. And I'm like, well, dude, to be fair, you did that yourself one time by making her tell everybody she was your sister. Right. Like, so like if, if it's evil to do that, then maybe there was you... a role play that got overheard. Heath and Wright told me about some stuff. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's not the point. <laughs> so, but but he has this whole big like, you know. Well, why do you think my people are evil? He's cause the, he says, because they're the wrong religion. He's like, oh, so everybody who isn't your religion is evil? He's like, no, everybody's evil, including my religion. I'm like, well, this, is, this doesn't make any fucking sense. I mean, it's because there's only one half of this locket that's on my necklace. <laughs> yes, right. Yes, exactly. This is just as best. Once it says friends too, it all it's makes gonna sense. It's going to be great. <laughs> it's going to be fine. <laughs> Well, yeah. So, so, and then Ash is like, well, what about Hagar? You sent her away from your home with your young son with nothing, no food or any money. And I'm like, wow, this is a really great question. And, and Abraham in his defense says, well, to be fair, Ishmael was being such a dick to Isaac at that point. Who's my real kid? So there's that. Mm -hmm. And, and Ash is like, really? That's all we're getting. He's like, no, God also told me to uh, abandon my son and push his mom out the door with with nothing but the clothes on her back. Also did that. And a wineskin. She had water, too. A little bit. God gave her some extra. It's not that bad. You guys are being... It's a slave! Come on! You guys are being weird. Yeah. We're all having a good time. So, but Ash is, Ash is not having a good time, right? So he starts yelling and shoving. And then we have this amazing moment where Kevlar like carries him out of the cave. Like he's being escorted out of a Walmart or something. And he's yelling <laughs> back the whole time. <laughs> he's just grabbing the gum from the thing by the register on his way out as best he can. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Knocking over the roll ups. Yeah. But so then we get a slave fight, right? Kevlar and Ash start fighting. Ash runs at. Abraham with a rock in his hand to brain him. But just then, Abraham pulls out some sweet fucking Donatello moves. It's not sweet and enough. It's, it's not sweet it's, enough. Okay, I'm sorry. The <laughs> fact that they literally have Abraham fight a dude with his walking staff <laughs> is beyond my wildest hopes and dreams for this movie. Let me have this. I Eli. laughed a lot. I wanted baton twirling. I wanted... <laughs> I wanted that thing action heroes do where they get their powers where they're just dodging, right? They're not even yes, hitting back. They're right, just yeah. bouncing. Now, that's what I want. <laughs> no, but Ash just runs at him and he just <laughs> hits him once in the face and he goes down. It was pretty funny. It was just like, wow, but, well, I won. Oh, oh I just realized what these markings mean. They mean, eat it, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They literally had a bust out with his signature weapon. I couldn't fucking believe it. And then just then as he's knocking this guy out, the horseman from Nebraska shows up. Right. And I'm OK. Again, worst accent possibly that we have ever seen. Maybe the second worst after the original communist accent. It's so bad that I brought a clip. 
so here it is. This is the accent that this guy was genuinely using in this actual movie. Well done, old man. Seems our warrior Shepard still wanted to be reckoned with, even in the twilight of his years. Abram of the Kazdim. Abraham. Having a bit of a scuffle, are we? No, you shouldn't charge your master like that. Especially one known to conquer kings. You'll be fortunate if he doesn't put you to death for it. So did he go see A Christmas Carol in between filming the two scenes? Like, where do we think? Because it's very obvious this actor got notes, right? This actor got notes between scene one and scene two. And either this is a sarcastic, retributive (laughs) performance or those notes didn't go well. Oh, I'm going with sarcastic. I like that answer. But yeah, so so but Isaac's had enough of their shit. And he's like, hey, that lady that's behind you, you stole her from a dude with a wheelbarrow. We know. We know you did. And everyone looks at Ash like, oh, what's all my people? Why are you so charged judges? And then he's like, okay, one. <laughs> this looks bad for me. So, to, be, to be fair, to be fair, they these ones was, are pretty rapey. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But, to, but but then Nebraska Horseman draws his sword and Isaac's like, I ain't scared. And, and everybody's like, dude, what are you going to fight him with your fucking hat? Oh, God, if he fought him with the fucking hat. But better. Oh, man. He <laughs> just he throws he the hat, hat like on job. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite movie. I would just say this would be my yep. favorite movie. Yeah, he goes full Liu Kang on him or some shit. Yeah. So, but when he pulls out the sword and he points it at Isaac and the, by the way, they treat it like a fucking gun. He keeps pointing his sword at people. Right. Like that's right. how that works. It, at one point, he grabs Isaac and he holds the sword to his head, the tip of the sword. What are you going to stab through the side <laughs> of his head? <laughs> uh, hard, but it hurts. OK, at this moment, I was like, hold on. If this soldier guy stabs Isaac, can Abraham like jump <gasps> in and do like one stab at the end and have it still? Quick before he dies, quick before he dies. <laughs> Okay, you killed my son in this pre-Mexican standoff. I'm going to burn his body now, and I know that feels wild, but it is. <laughs> Quick stab, light a match. Okay, no, no, we're good. We're good. You'd Got, be surprised, right? that actually, at how little my plans have changed now. Oh, he uh, <laughs> slow-mo throws a match at his son. <laughs> Walks away. <laughs> they both explode. I took my gasoline bath, yeah. Papa. <laughs> <laughs> so... So, but Isaac's like, I'll tell you what, you can have me. I'll trade you me for the woman that you stole, right? Because we have to see that Isaac is brave. And then all of the other soldiers are like, yay, we can rape him in the butt. There's like this actual moment. I'm also gay. We are also gay for clarity. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, but but the horseman grabs Isaac. Abe goes to fight him. There's a fight that we don't really see much of because they don't have the choreography for that. But but Abe does get conked unconscious by a sword hilt at some point. Way less karate powers than I wanted him to yeah, have. Yeah, no, that's fair. It, this, like, they really did set up for him to take out four guys now. But he doesn't. Instead, he starts flat. He's like, there's this bit where the, the fight's going on over top of him, but they're layering in even more flashback shit that they didn't quite get to yet. Right? Oh, yeah. Is this where we get the voice of God being like, should I hide what I'm doing with Abraham? Yes. Who was God talking to there? Great question. Tyler. A fucking board meeting with <laughs> Tyler. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why would an all knowing fucking being have a should I type question to begin with? Yeah. Like a lot of a lot of questions here. OK, here's my question. If Sarah Huckabee Sanders had answered, do we sue or is this our favorite movie? <laughs> That's a good question, G Dog. Secret answer C, all of the above. Yeah. <laughs> she starts talking to senior pets, and we're just like, okay, <laughs> it's a win. Okay. In all the right, fabric everybody. Of the we, we I feel better up. now that we know it was a simulation. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, but God's wondering what he should do out loud to an audience and Kevlar at the same time is fighting the bad guys over Abe's body, right? Like Kevlar comes to his rescue because Kevlar's a good slave that knows his place. Okay. But he, he throws the rock, right? That's the rock throw. Yeah. Uh-huh. And it just, it hits the soldier guy, like in the back of his shoulder, doesn't really do anything. Mm-hmm. So that guy was about to like murder Abraham. And then he was like, ow, 
That's Ow. that's a fucking bruise now. You guys want to bail? Okay, they're throwing rocks. We're done. Yeah. We're done. Right. Yeah. <laughs> they just leave. They're like, well, I didn't know we were going to be throwing rocks at people here. <laughs> so they get back on their horses and they take off. They're like, we're, our part of the plot is done. Go, come on, come on. My fingernail has a little chip in it. Ah, oh, it's like dirt under it. There's like gravel. I got to get home and take care of this right away because uh, it's going to get caught on a shirt and I don't want I don't want to <laughs> even think about it. <laughs> I'm going to ruin the fingernail and the shirt. And then, like, in the most, oh, yeah, fuck, we forgot flashback of the entire movie. Suddenly, Abraham flashes back to that moment where he levels up from Abram to Abraham. Oh, right. Sorry. We did, we, earlier in the movie, we, we, we're we editing this out of order. Oh, you're adding an A <laughs> to your name. An H. Uh, but not too adding many. A or a Harry Keller will ha. sue you. <laughs> <laughs> so... And he says, and then and God's like, oh, so by the way, your your wife will get pregnant here. He's like, oh, so I raped that slave for nothing. And he's like, well, you know, not nothing. Yeah, I should have given you a heads up. So a lot of the times when someone says they want to open up the relationship, they're doing it as a test. But you really should both have read the ethical <laughs> slut before you did this. Uh, it's um, it's not a healthy way to communicate. Yeah, I think you and Sarah should break up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so okay, so then we get one last little bit of of. Sarah, one part of the flashback here. Now, this should have been the part of the Bible where her and God argue about whether she giggled when God suggested she would have an orgasm at the age of 90. <laughs> right? Like, that's, come on. Like, you're going to te tease us with that bit and then not give it to us. Wait, can you not when you get 90? Is that, does that, is that like a, you can't? Probably not. I don't oh, think so. Really? I mean, I can't, and I'm only 37. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just assumed the cutoff was 25. I don't yeah, know. Right. What do we, how many have? Are yeah. you guys still having orgasms? <laughs> Stop the podcast. You have to tell me. I do the ones that go inward. <laughs> <laughs> Mental. So yeah, but since she can feel her pregnancy now. It's a miracle. She goes, who would believe it? And I'm like, well, you're supposed to be 90. So no reasonable person would. Yeah. And again, like, I think the movie wants this to be like a wholesome miracle moment, but all she has done is trick her husband into an open relationship, be mad at him, and then banish the rape slave. So her, you know, there's a baby on the way fucking Instagram post isn't exactly hitting the <laughs> notes that this movie wants it to hit with me. <laughs> right. I think the movie thinks they're nailing it for sure. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Oh, yeah. 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 So okay. So it's time for the big finish. We we get. I well, sorry. The the they they add. They don't add you a little, tease me yep, with a yep. big finish. No, no illusions. This is not quite the big finish yet. So so we get Isaac loading up the wood. He's gonna go up the mountain. Now God said you had to sacrifice him. God didn't say you had to make him carry the wood himself that you were gonna burn him with. That's just fucking insult to injury there. Do you want to eat your gummies now before we go up? No. Yeah. I know. I usually make you wait until after lunch. But it's, um... <laughs> so yeah, so they leave the slaves at the bottom of the mountain, just like they do in the Bible. And as they walk away, we have this moment of Kevlar going like, you see what a great slave owner we're owned by. If it wasn't for Abe, I'd still have the wrong religion like you. <laughs> yeah. He fixed everything according to this little speech. Like, uh, we had the gods of Damascus and we were pagan and evil. And then Abraham showed up and all the wicked stuff went away. And then straight cut to Abraham walking to a stabbing yes. of his son. Mm -hmm. Of his son. Of the one that he didn't banish. Yeah. So, and by the way, this is when Isaac's like, hey, I just noticed that we don't have a lamb. Uh, I know it's weird because we're three days in. Oh, but no. I with the whole no, thing you know this. You're too busy looking at your little hat in the mirror, you <laughs> fucking idiot. I don't care if an angel stops me. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it anyways. <laughs> I will fight an angel to do this. <laughs> Abe's like, well, no, God said he'd provide the lamb for the burnt offering. He's like, oh, so God's going to what sacrifice this to himself? He's like, it's, it's kind of like that you ask a lot of fucking questions. For a guy in a hat. We're going to find a lamb up there? This is yep. on Isaac at this point, right? Like, he needs yes. to just realize what the fuck is happening. <laughs> well, I look, look, I mean, yeah, he's real slow to get to this, but let's be honest. If your dad was about to stab you and set you on fire, you'd also, like, come up with a lot of different alternate explanations before you landed there. I get it. For all we know, Heath's about to tell us that his dad did stab well, him and true. set him on fire, and it was a great <laughs> prank. It was a good lesson. He learned a lot that day. All right, so so they get to the top of the mountain. <laughs> Abe starts making an altar, right? We're going to flash now in between this and Isaac being born now, right? Yeah. 
just a, a real modern dressed woman. They did not have an extra robe on set for her. No. So she's just wearing fucking a JC Penny dress, smoking a Marlboro red, being like, <laughs> your baby's ready. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> so then finally, it's time for Abe to break it to Isaac. He's like, forgive me, son. And Isaac's like, for what? And he's like, I'm about to uh, stab you to death on this uh, pile of rocks here. Yeah. And Isaac, he's like, oh, um, could you double check? Yeah, maybe you get maybe, it in writing? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. Can, uh, it's me trying to be nice to a customer service person while also asking for a manager. The <laughs> dramatic scene. Just, oh my God, you've been so helpful. Do you have a supervisor who I can say what a great job you did? Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> and also maybe they have the answer to my question. Well, yeah, no, all things considered, <laughs> Isaac has taken this like a fucking champ, right? He, yeah. Isaac's like, you sure that's what God said? He's like, pretty he, sure. He wears that hat. He gets what? it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Isaac has had a like, I am sorry, man. I got to stab you conversations. That's fair. I've been there. That's fair. Yeah, he's like, well, you know, we came all this way. I guess kill me. And then, of course, we get the famous binding of Isaac, right? Because in the Bible, it says he tied Isaac up and put him on the thing. Now, in the Bible, it also doesn't say Isaac was cool with this, right? So the implication is he tied Isaac up because Isaac was fighting to get away. But no, in this movie, it's like, yeah, I guess you should probably tie my hands together so that I look more sacrificial. Okay, as someone who's tried to brush a toddler's teeth, if they had done that in this point in the movie, it would have been a comedy. It's a whole, come on, but hey, don't you want us to sing the farmer's song? Oh, he was in the farmer's songs. <laughs> so yeah, so he ties Isaac up, throws him on the thing. I like that Isaac finally took the hat off for this moment. He did. Yeah, somber. And it, fe it felt like an extra test from God being like, okay, I know you want to kill him now, but like, what if the hat is fine? What if he's <laughs> not wearing <laughs> the hat? You still have to do it though. And he's still doing it. Abraham's still doing it. So he lights the fire. He puts him on the thing, takes off the hat. He lifts the knife. We get a bunch of a flash of weird God shit. Like basically we get all the stuff they didn't find room for elsewhere in the movie. Mm -hmm. Okay. Didn't you want like a one, two, three go count here? Didn't it seem yeah. like there should be yeah. a little bit a more build up, clock. like official? Yeah. Right. But he does it early. Like he's pulling a tooth. Yes, so exactly. Don't like out. one, two, and he Sam. just jumps away. Yeah. Out of it. Like, oh, no, 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 sorry. Sorry. No, I'm good. I'm good. I got this. I got it. It's like it tickles. It's like it tickles. Okay. okay, okay. All right. <laughs> No, I'm going to do it. So, so he lifts the knife up. He gets this God flesh. And then suddenly God's like, ah, psych. God, you Jesus. You should see the look on your face, dude. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. Wish they had cameras. And to be clear, like that is what God does. God's like, yep. now I know you fear me. And he's like, really? That's how, you, aren't you psychic? Yeah. Aren't you, <laughs> aren't you the creator all knowing? of thoughts? Yes. Yeah. You knew how this was going to go, right? Is this a prank show? I asked someone earlier if it was a good idea and they said yes. <laughs> yeah. And, and because, because we're stuck with the fucking Bible story, they see a lamb and they go, oh, let's kill this instead. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I wanted so badly for Abraham to be like, Isaac, did you shit your pants? Because we have like a three day walk back and I know you don't have a change of clothes because you were wearing that hat the whole time. It was going to be an awkward walk no matter what, because of, you know, I almost have you just now, but like the shit also now. Look, we have three days to get this story straight for your mother. And as you yes. can tell, she treats me like shit. So I, really, I need to put a real good glaze on this meatball. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I thought, honestly, God was going to jump in and be like, fuck, dude, I meant Ishmael. Obviously, the, yeah, the, the one you don't like. Yeah, yeah, right, Come right. On. Yeah, Jesus. Oh, I'm going to kill him. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Well, and so, okay. So, and, and this is a problem that's inherent in the biblical story as well, right? Because at this point, God's like, now that I know you fear me and would do anything for me, I'm not going to break my promise about you having all these descendants. But then it's like, so you were going to break your promise until now? Yes. Because you already made this vow repeatedly. And yes, the answer is yes. I get to call back seas. Most of the Bible. Hey, we've read the Bible and have been acting through it multiple times now. Mm -hmm. Most mm -hmm. of the Bible is the God is God calling back seas. No, you're right. Clear. No, that is fair. Yeah. So then. Lest you think this was some kind of filthy Jew movie, we cut to 2,000 years later on Mount Calvary. <laughs> yes. And again, the point of this scene is to be like, huh? You think killing a kid is bad, but God killed his kid. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
What do you mean that's not better? Right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> to be clear, God was like, oh, this is good. This is good. I should do that, too, with uh, with my son. But I'll do it. But go real. through with it. But, but, go, but, but go I'm going to go yeah. through with it because I'm still mad at me. Yeah. <laughs> if, like, God starts to crucify Jesus and he's like, huh? Looking around for like God, God to stop right. him. God, God to stop him. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. Hey, all right. I'm yeah. doing this then. I was, <laughs> I was told all doers have a cause. Oh, I'm going to crucify my kid. <laughs> Damn it. So yeah, we get the truly this man was the son of God line. The, the guy and, and yet another fucking movie that has a chance to do the earthquake in the zombie army and chooses not to fucking Doesn't do cowards. It. Cowards. And then we get, we close on John 316. John 316, the most boring of the Bible phrases. And then of course, everything fades out in John 316, except for his only son. Credits. Huh? Get it? Because it was God's only son. Yeah, that was the son we were talking about the whole time. That, that he chose to have. And that's why Ishmael doesn't count. <laughs> yeah, right. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but there's actually a couple of post-credits Bible verses as well. Did not Oh, I didn't know. I didn't yeah, notice. A, the problem was I had turned off the movie. Right, because, yeah, <laughs> why would you keep... Yeah, actually, the only reason I knew is because I kept fast-forwarding. Like, I kept, like, scrolling my cursor along the bottom to be like, how much of this is credits? Right, like a lot a of, this of credits. credits right? Yeah, so, yeah, a lot was, of credits. Yeah, it was a good. It was a good one for yeah, credits. Yeah, no, it we was. Love, there was like we love a big credit scene here. <laughs> if you wonder, like, what we enjoy as the doers of this podcast, <laughs> ten minutes of credits. Yes. Oh, right, hits the real spot here. God awful movies. <laughs> yeah, my favorite films, and the reason, by the way, that there were so many credits is because at the end, there's like three and a half minutes of all the Kickstarter backers in one point type. So, mm -hmm. yeah. All the folks responsible. All right. Well, it looks like Christian movie studios have run out of good Bible stories to tell, and yet they're still telling them. So, assuming they're going to get to everything eventually, which terrible Bible story film adaptation are you looking forward to the most? Ooh, I'm going to go with the lovers with donkey-sized genitals. Though, to okay. be fair, I have seen that movie, so I think <laughs> yeah. it could just be a title a, a issue. Hola yeah. does a Syria or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, I was thinking the thing when David... <laughs> takes 200 foreskins off the Philistine soldiers. Sure. And he sure. presents them and he's like, there you go. We're the better now. You're yes, all my right. happier yeah, like, blood wives yeah. or something. Nobody ever explains how who counts them or anything. Yeah, that's the kind of, those are the questions I want. You I, could see, call I that was, one the foreskin unleashed. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I did it. Well done. No, I'll stop the podcast yep, right now. No, Don't no, do any I have to. I say, here stuff. we go. And, just, well, that just does it beat. for a review of his own Four son. skin unleashed. Morgan, put that in where I say it. <laughs> it's it's not going to do Morgan, it for the episode. Delete all this audio. Because <laughs> we still need to tempt ourselves back in next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, we're headed to Orlando, Florida, which means we've got to take on some local yokels. So, we'll be watching the Catholic League's anti Disney documentary. Walt's Disenchanted Kingdom. Oh, my fucking God. Are there tickets still, is your general admission tickets still available for that show? There Eli? are it's a like couple, they, yes. Not a lot, but there are some. Godawfulmovieslive.com or check the show notes for links to buy your tickets. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 445 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors to help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation to patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our civilly shows, the scathing of the citation needed D&D minus and the skeptic credit available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email at godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slatt. Maybe we've addressed some All the other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath and Wright, Neil Abbasdick, I'm no illusions. Promise to work harder earn another check next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. God kept his promise, and everything was super chill for the descendants of Abraham and Ishmael and Isaac mm -hmm. ever <laughs> since. Sure yeah. was. Sarah would go on to die, and for some reason, the part of the Bible about that would mostly be Abraham haggling about the price of her burial plot. Isaac would go on to give the wrong kid his dad blessing, which, if you think about it, it's a pretty funny one. It's, mm -hmm. it's good. good. Got him.
Morgan, if you could just play that gently a teeth every time you try to go to sleep for the next year. <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm LLC, copyright 2024, all rights reserved. Looking for some easy ways to save energy this winter? Wait, what? Caulk and weather strip air leaks to keep heat in. Oh, I can do that. Set your ceiling fan to rotate clockwise. You'll stay warmer and save energy. Oh, I can do that. Close up your fireplace damper and save energy all season long. Oh, 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 oh yeah. Now I can do that. Get more tips from Ohio Edison at energysaveohio.com. eBay Motors es tu socio seguro. Con trabajo, piezas nuevas y mucha pasión, transformaste una carrocería oxidada con 100,000 millas en un vehículo totalmente singular. Juegos de frenos, faros, lo que necesites, eBay Motors lo tiene. Con Guaranteed Fit de eBay, te aseguras que la pieza le quede a tu carro a la primera o se te devuelve tu dinero. Y a estos precios, ¿qué más llantas y no dinero? Mantén vivo ese espíritu de Ride or Die, baby, en eBay Motors. eBayMotors.com. Solo para artículos elegibles. Se aplican restricciones.